Hey, what's happening YouTube? Gonna do another video today. Gonna talk about sexing uh, Dendrobates tinctorius. I've never done a sexing video on them. When I say sexing, I mean determining males and females. Um, I don't know if there's any videos out there to be honest with you. Um, I didn't really look all that hard or didn't even search, but I never really see it come up uh, on YouTube, so uh, it's not a question I get too often anymore, but uh, I used to get that question quite a bit, and still sometimes some of my friends, um, you know, occasionally they'll message me and be like, you know, what do you think this is, male or female? Um, you know, I have a lot of experience with Tinctorious. Uh, you know, I've had them since 2000, I think, so, or 2001 maybe, so, you know, 17, 18 years. Um, I've had a lot of experience with them, and obviously with a lot of experience comes a lot of determining what I have males or females of. So, um, without, you know, I guess the way I do it is by the front toe pads, you know, determining the size difference between the front toe pads and the rear toe pads. Sometimes, you you know, in certain species, can or morphs, I should say, a certain uh, locality morphs, they can differ or be more difficult to determine what's male or female. But, you know, still, the, the biggest problem I see is that people try to sex them too young. You know, sometimes they'll go 10, because 10 to 12 months they can breed. You know, they can lay eggs and the, the males can fertilize the eggs at that age. But, um, you know, the, as far as their characteristics of looking like a female or male, sometimes take a little longer. Sometimes I notice 14 to 16 months, um, it's almost a dead giveaway almost every time. You know, very seldomly I'll run across something with where the toe pads I'm like, wow, that looks like a female and it turns to be a male, um, or vice versa. So, you know, usually the uh, the males, they kind of get heart-shaped, um, like the tip of them here, like on the, on the end of it, you know, it'll kind of be heart-shaped. And when you compare it to the rear toe pads, it's not even close in size. The males are always much, much larger. Um, in my experience, you know, someone may have something out there where it looks like a female and it turns up being a male. Um, but I, you know, and, and I only have three Tinctorious morphs anymore. I got rid of most of mine. Um, I'm mainly working with Ufaga and uh, Histrionica sylvatica. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you what I have, the males and females I have, and show you the difference. And it, it's, you know, it's, it's a clear night and day. Uh, you know, the back, the shape of their back also has something to do with it. You know, males tend to be more of a slope back um you know it's more of a slope where the females it's squared off um but i never really use that as a determining fact i always go for toe pads first and then usually um because like i say that the feet that arch usually comes a little later like the backs the the shape of the back that usually i notice that later 14 to 16 months and also, at 10 to 12 months, both frogs are usually around the same size. Um, and then 14 to 16 months, that's when you'll see the female gets much bigger, much uh, more rotund. But, yeah, it's it's just, I, I think, a lot of times I see people sex, trying to sex Tinctorious at 8 months, and I'm just like, no, that's, that's not going to work. Um, it's nowhere near the time to, to sex them. So, um... In this video, I'm going to show you uh, my male and female Katari River, my male and female Green Sip Halloweeny, and my male and female Yellowback. And I'll show you the technique I use for catching them. Um, and it's a really, really simple, I just use a fr an empty fruit fly container, mist it with uh, distilled or reversed osmosis water, throw the frog in there, and I'll show you where I look and how I determine what's male and female. And I hope this helps you guys uh, do the same. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into that and take the camera off my tripod and go from there. So. Okay, I've got all my Tinctorious cupped up and uh, I'm going to go through and show you each one. We're going to do the Katari River first. Um, here's the male. Now you can't really tell yet, um, but you can see how big his front toe pads are. This is not the way I usually look at them. So, I'm going to show you the female first. That's here, okay, and you can see her front toe pads are actually pretty big, um, and like I look at the difference from the back, see now some Tinctorious back toes, 
they don't really flare out like that. They're just they're thin the whole way through. Um, so, but on this one, you can see. I mean, hers are pretty pretty large, and that one actually is a little heart shaped on the right. Um, but yeah, if you look at from here to here, um, there is a difference, but. I'll show you on my mail, it's going to be a much bigger difference. So, um, so that's my female Qatari. And you can see how she's pretty, pretty rotund, pretty, pretty thick. So, um, okay, let's grab the, the mail. Put this lid back on here. Hopefully he doesn't spaz out. This is where the tripod comes in a lot of handy, but I'm not using it because I'm going to be moving around too much. It would be a big pain in the butt. Alright, so when they're like this, that's bad. You can't really tell anything. So you get, got to try and get them just kind of bouncing around until they're flat. But now you can see how much bigger his are. So you look at those fronts and then look at these rears. I mean, they're not even in the same family of size. You know, it's night and day how much bigger his front toe pads are than his rear. You know, he's actually pretty thick too. She might have laid eggs yesterday. Um, but still, it's an over. If, if you're looking at them from the side, if you're looking at them from here, when they're just sitting in their this position, like their upright position, um, the males will have a much more sloped back. But uh, let me bring it into the light here again, as you can see. So they're just, it's not even comparable, in my opinion. You know, they're, they're so much bigger than the rears. So, dead giveaway, that's a male, and the other one is a female. You know, now, if you don't have, you know, say they all looked like the female, say you had three Qatari and they all looked like the female, it'd be kind of hard to tell, because they'd be, I'd be like, I don't know if I have three males or three females. You know, it's... When you can see the difference, that's when, oh my god, my yellow back pooped and it's enormous. Um, that's when you see the differences, when you have both sexes, you know. So sometimes it is a little difficult determining if you have all males or all females, you know. Because you, if you don't have one or the other, it's hard to tell. But, you know, if you buy four or more, uh, some even three, it's pretty rare if you get all the same sex. Of course, I snap these on really hard, and they don't want to knock him down. Male yellowback is being very difficult right now. Hopefully I can keep him at bay. He wants to see me. Okay. Oh, hello. Nope. Hold on. I've got the male yellowback back. Um... His are kind of hard to see because his are his tips are white. Uh, let me put you on a dark. There we go. You can see how wide his front toe pads are. I gotta get him in a better pose. See, I like to have him in this hanging pose. I kind of hold the cup upright like this, so they're kind of hanging, and and you see all their toes. Um that's a good shot right there so you can see his front toe pads how much bigger they are than the rears and you can see how streamlined he is he's much more narrow uh, than the female you'll see my female she's a beast and she just took a monster crap so um, yeah so dead giveaway that's a male like I said his are a little harder to see because they're white tips on the white background it's kind of more a little more difficult to see Put him away and bring out the female. You can see her monster dookie. Hopefully she doesn't spaz out as well. Sorry to put you back with your poop. Okay, here she goes. All right, and you can see hers. 
much shorter. Um, not nearly as big of a difference from the front and the rear. You can see, remember it's just the tips, just the toe pad. Nothing really with the actual finger, like the, I don't even know what you call it. It's just the, the tip. <laughs> That's what she said, just the tip. Um, so you see there, and there. Like, yeah, they're a little wider than the back, but it's it's when it's the big difference. That's when you can tell if it's a male or female. And you can see she's just nice and fat. Um, yeah, not really close in my opinion. Put her back with her shit. And let's see, who's next? We got the green sips. Okay, I'll do the female first. Try and knock her down. She's not as rotund because she just laid eggs yesterday, so she'll look a little thinner than she normally does, but she's not thin by any means. Okay. And hers, see, she has the heart shaped. You see how they have that heart shape there? Now, that's why sometimes people say heart shape means it's a male. That's not true. This is 100% a female green sip. And you can see her toes on the front do have that little uh, divot where it looks like a heart. But, and I mean, you know, honestly, if I had all females and they were all the, this female, like I had three of these, I would think I had three males, possibly. But I know green sit males, and green sit males have huge front toe pads. So I could tell here, there is a big difference here, but it's not as big as the males. So... Sips are uh, people. Oh, she's pooping right now. Um, people seem to have an, an issue sexing the green sips and also Qatari as well. Um, I know because females do have some wider toe pads, you know, like Azurius and some of the other Tinctorius. You know, you look at the front toe pads and they're really long and skinny um, and they have no, like, barely any, like, uh, flare at the, at the end. It doesn't flare out barely at all. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a difficult one because it looks like it could be male, but with her, her shape, her thickness, all that, it's a female. But let's show you the male and you'll see the big difference from the male and the female. Alright. Yeah, it's not even close. Similar to the Qatari, to be honest. Come on, get in a good pose. You just you see how how much bigger they are. It's it's something you look at and you notice immediately. Just how big they are, and you see, here's our heart shape too. It's got that heart shaped middle there. Um, and you look at the rears, look at the fronts. I mean, they're it's such a big difference. He doesn't want to see me. There we go. I'll get him to spread them out, and that's where you can tell the difference. When they're spread out like that, you just see how much bigger his fronts are. In the rears it's it's shockingly noticeable and he's smaller and thinner so toe pads like that smaller and thinner than the other one you got a male so that is how I sex my tinctorious um, it's been the most effective way for me I've never really um, misidentified one of my frogs as a male or a female uh, as far as Tinctorius goes, I have done for Histrionica and other things, because there that's a whole different ball game. Sexing those, Ufaga and Histrionica Sylvatica, it's mainly just you kind of just look for calling. Um, some people can go off characteristics of appearance, but I don't do that. I just go for calling. If one doesn't call, then <laughs> normally it's a female. Males do have some stuff that you can see on their throat patch. Um, I'll do another video on those, particularly just just Ufaga and Sylvatica and Histrionica. I'll do a sexing video, but yeah, this is uh, just for Tinctorius. You know, I'm not, I've, I honestly, I never really kept Aratus or I have Leucomelis and Leucomelis. I know you pretty much go by females are really round um, and males call. So, uh, which that's an obvious giveaway. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you learned something and you're on your way to breeding Tinctorius. 
and hopefully uh, get some good eggs and good froglets, all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah, like, it's pretty simple. You know, I think sometimes people look into it too much. I've heard people talk about how wide their noses look, like the tip of their nose, if it's wide or not, or if one's pointy. You know, that, that may be true, and it may work for them. Uh, I don't do that. So the way I showed you is exactly what I do when, t when I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I've got a male or a female, and so I can get them breeding. But, yeah, um, like I said, it's, you know, it's simple. You know, once you once you do have a male and a female, um, you know, just make sure there's multiple egg laying sites. You know, I use petri dishes under cocoa huts, so I have multiple in each tank. Um, you know, they will lay on leaves as well, bromeliad leaves, but the petri dish under the cocoa hut is by far the easiest. You can use deli cup lids as well, but uh, I find the petri dish is is much easier after the legs are the eggs are laid. Um, it's stiffer you can put more water in it um, keep the eggs kind of from going moldy so that's a whole different ball game and another that's for another video I guess you know what I do for my eggs but I thought I showed you guys I may have showed you my tadpole video but yeah it's you know it's simple so um, you know like I say egg laying sites uh, you know you want to mist pretty heavy and feed heavy you know multiple small feedings a day when you're trying to promote breeding is going to be better than one huge feeding. Um, you know, when when you put too many flies in, it actually stress them out. So, you know, I I put in an adult tinctorious tank um, when I'm, you know, I don't need to. And this is again power feeding and power misting. Um, you know, I, I kind of power mist all the time. I went over that in my vis my misting video. But as far as feeding, um, you know, I only need to feed my adults maybe three, four times a week, maybe. Um, you know, there's microfauna in there and, you know, they're, they're, they're fine. But when you get an, a, a, a young pair or a sexed pair but not proven, it have, they haven't bred yet and you're trying to promote breeding, um, you're gonna, I, what I like to do is I feed multiple times with small feedings. You know, say maybe 50 flies, uh, 50 to 100 flies four times a day and it just it's promoting the female promoting you know um, eggs like to you know she'll get gravid and everything so uh, it's it's a good thing for promoting breeding again just with tinctorious I'm not sure if it works with the pamilio and all that but I imagine it's the same thing they need food they need vitamins I'll do vitamins in a different video I have quite a few it'll be a quick video for that um, you know, I don't just use one thing, so I use multiple things. Um, and certain things are better for eggs, like vitamin A. You know, if you're getting a lot of bad eggs, vitamin A is good. Um, I, I don't use vitamin A that often, maybe twice a month. Um, I know I've heard some people use it daily or multiple times a week, which I know people that have had bad experiences and lost frogs because of over supplementing vitamin A. So you do need to be a little bit careful with vitamin A, at least. I do. I'm careful with it. You know, someone else may use it and have great results, but I've heard bad things from overusing it. So, um, and carotenoids and stuff like that, Naturos, uh, my buddy Damien sells this, uh, Renarium. Um, I use that as well. It's good for the Ufega and stuff like that. It's really good stuff. So, getting to that in a different video. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys learned. I'm sorry about my phone. Someone is, in, I'm in a group chat, and somebody, I'm guessing, is talking about frogs. So um, they have a lot of questions. And I was going to tell you guys, um, if you're having trouble after this video and you still are, are on the fence about what, you're, what you've got, if you've got a male or a female, um, you know, I'm on Facebook, Troy Goldberg, same as the, uh, the YouTube. I'm in Youngstown, Ohio, so I shouldn't be that hard to find. And just look for a dude, big dude with a beard. Um, Feel free to message me there, and if you want to send me your pictures of the males or females, um, I will say please, if you're going to do that, make sure they're at least 12 months old. Um, I, I'd rather not try to sex anything 10 months. If you send me something that's 10 months old, I'll give you my opinion and say that's about 50% uh, opinion. Um, send me a picture in 2-3 months. You know, 12 months is really when I like to sex animals. 
So feel free to message me there and send me pictures of your frogs and I can go from there. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys learn from this and you don't need to send me pictures, but if you need to, by all means, feel free. So uh, till next time, I'm not sure what the next video will be on. Like, comment, subscribe. You can tell me in the comments what you guys want to see a video on. Um, somebody did want to see, I got a message about my uh, Ufega Pamilio care. You know, basically a care sheet, what to do. Um, tank setup, plants, food, froglets. I can go over all that. So I'm thinking that's probably going to be the next video. But um, I let you guys let me know what you want to see. And, you know, I'll do my best to post what you guys are after. Because ultimately I'm doing this channel for you guys. Um, so you can learn stuff. And I can, you know, just teach you what, I, what, you know, what I've experienced in 17, 18 years. Um, in kind of a laid back approach. I'm kind of a laid back guy. I don't do things. Oh, well, I've gone over that before. So you guys have heard me ramble on enough. So without further ado, until next time, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.